The inner workings of a Mr Big undercover police operation have been laid bare to a jury in a High Court murder trial. At the end of a three-month undercover operation, David Little admitted to killing Brett Hall at a rural Whanganui property in May 2011. He said he shot Mr Hall between the eyes, cut his body into two pieces and buried him in two places on separate beaches near Bulls. But Mr Hall's body has never been found and the defence says the confession was coerced. Ben Strang has been covering the case at the High Court in Wellington and joins me now. Ben, what was this operation that the police ran? Well, Brett Hall went missing in May 2011, uh, but David uh, David Little soon became a key suspect in this. It wasn't until three years later that the police's undercover crew were asked to run this undercover operation, a Mr Big operation. These operations started in Canada in the mid-90s and New Zealand started doing them in about 2005. So essentially what they're putting together is a team of undercover police officers who have this fake uh, criminal organisation which they get a target involved with. Uh, In this specific operation, it started when people door-knocked David Little's house and long story short, he ended up doing a survey, winning a, a fishing trip and that is where he was introduced to a person who was part of this Mr Big gang. Uh, And over the next three months, they slowly brought him into that group, um, culminating in a meeting with this Mr Big character, the big boss of the group. So what what have we learnt about the confession? Why why did he confess? Well, throughout the operation, the main uh, handler, uh, called Nick O'Neill, drummed into Mr Little that there were three important things being part of this group. Uh, That was honesty, trust and loyalty. Uh, He also subtly flashed some of the potential uh, that being part of this group was. He was driven around in a Porsche Cayenne four-wheel drive. Uh, There was a time where the first job he went on, somebody owed $15,000 and it was mentioned that the money doesn't really matter to Mr Big, uh, it's just a, a figure, but it's the, the honesty and the trust that is the biggest currency for him. So that was the important thing. These sorts of things were mentioned all the time throughout this operation. Um, and by his own admission, this uh, Mr O'Neill said he spent about 73 hours with Mr Little and probably mentioned honesty, trust and loyalty over 100 times. Uh, so after three months of this, um, building up to the moment when he actually met the big boss, uh, that's when he revealed that he had killed Mr Hall. So what does the defence have to say about all of this? Well, the defence is saying that this is coerced, that by flashing all of the uh, cash, uh, the flash cars, which was a hand-me-down, and the suggestion is if you're part of the group, that you get given these cars, that he just thought he had to say the right things to get these sorts of things. He was in financial difficulties himself. And so when it came to time to to offer up uh, his explanation of what happened to Mr Hall, he just went for it thinking that he was in this situation where he was going to end up in a, in a better place financially. So Justice Jill Mellon, the, the judge in the case, was very clear before the jury heard all, any of this audio that uh, she said if there was an incentive and no perceived punishment for him to confess the murder then it's plausible that this could be a false confession and so the jury have to consider whether that's the case. Thanks, Ben. That's Ben Strang, who's been covering that rather interesting case, uh, uh, murder trial in the High Court.